But to start us off, we've got Andrew versus Sir Isaac, or uh, Magic Mocha, he's also known as. So we're going to dive into this set here. Uh, Ethan, man, thanks for starting the stream out with the sub, man. Always good. Love it. Great times. Appreciate it. Maybe we can play some games again sometime soon. I don't know. After you moved, it's been tough. But uh, always hope that I can play with you here sometime. But uh, first set of the day... We're gonna have show met or I don't even know this is incorrect. I need to fix this draft. <laughs> this should say uh tournament now, not show match. But it's the draft nonetheless it's the it's the draft, right? So no worries. Uh Magic Mocha or Sir Isaac had chosen Nomad Hubs and Andrew chose lanes. And then obviously we draft all the way down until we have one neutral map, which will be Dry Lake, actually. Which is exciting. We'll have to get into that first. Dry Lake will be game number one. Civilizations here for both. We have Magic Mocha banning the Britons. He'll have Khmer, Malians, Chinese, and Ethiopians. Berbers were sniped from him. Chinese were actually a random selection. So that's always an interesting situation. And then Andrew banned Spanish. He chose Koreans, Byzantines, Mongols, Burgundians. Magyars were sniped from him. So we'll dive into game one here in just a second. But just wanted to say thank you guys again for all your support. You guys have been killing it, and I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying this tournament. I know I have been. And we're still in the super early stages of the bracket, right? So it's even more exciting. Give me a second here to load into the wreck. I can find the wreck. I have so many games, it's absolutely ridiculous. Dry Lake is game number one. And Yesterbari, a daytime cast, because why not? I have some time. I'm free for the moment. Game one. Andrew versus uh, Magic Mocha or Sir Isaac. Known as both. I think he actually plays on his controller most of the time. His Magic Mocha account and Sir Isaac was his old PC account, basically. Nonetheless, he will be in blue. I'm not even looking at him here. I'm talking about him. And then we will have Andrew, a long time sub, and the guy from around the channel will be here. And uh, he'll be playing as the Byzantines. Dr. Loops, thank you, thank you for the follow. Bari needs to practice. Jabari doesn't want to practice. He doesn't want to give away his strategies now. He He's going to be that guy. <laughs> What's up, Magic Mocha? Welcome, welcome. Casting your set today. Uh, early stream for me. I have a little bit of time to cast a set. Literally one set. If this goes three games and takes two hours, that's about all the time I've got. So we're diving in, and then I'll be back later this evening for my normal stream time should be uh, around 9 p.m. and I'm going to try to cast two more sets tonight. We have a lot of sets that have come in over the holiday weekend and it's been absolutely insane. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and as far as Dry Lake is concerned, you each start with three boar. Actually, this boar could be considered either player's boar, right? But I think it actually belongs to Andrew based on the generation here. PC trick comes in two. Oh, he's, he did survive, but Villagers, we're not going back to work. A bit awkward, a bit awkward indeed. Uh, but, nonetheless, you start with a horse scout on this map. A lot of correct terrain, so buildings can be going down a lot faster. We uh, I used to have a different version of this one that Kados actually created. Kados 101, for those who know who he is. And we actually had only, there was only one pond, and the shorefish were kind of irrelevant. We try to make it an even more open map this way. But, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Jabari is uh, is not happy with how much he's been playing, apparently. <laughs> oh, Jabari, we we have played far too many games, huh? Is that is that so? I mean, a few thousand, a few thousand games. Eh, not too bad. Too many maps. There's there's only 13 maps, and you only have to play at most three for this round. One home map, and uh, then obviously the neutral map and your opponent's home map. But double elimination would have been nice. Yeah, well, double elimination would have taken a lot longer. 
and would have prevented me from doing the 1700 bracket and the 1300 bracket at the same time. This way, I'm already overwhelmed with the number of things I need to do, and we have a ton of participants, so... Everyone's hanging on by a thread. Yes, yes, this is true. I mean, to be fair, a lot of other uh, streamers and tournament hosts, if there's a round, anything larger than round of 32, it's usually best of one. And that's, you get one game. At least you have a chance to play a home map and potentially something else. One of the 1700 bracket games going to YouTube, they will start being uploaded to YouTube like the day after they're cast. Right now I'm behind. Today, uh, I have another YouTube video for the final round of 32 set that will go live a little bit later today. And then we have uh, like at least one set tomorrow, maybe two sets tomorrow. I haven't really, I haven't figured out the schedule yet. I, I do this all by myself, Dr. Loops. Uh, as far as the the streaming part of everything, the YouTube part of everything, it's all me. So, stretched thin these last couple days and really haven't been able to lock down when I'm doing what, right? I mean, today I have a little bit of time, so I'm just trying to squeeze a set in is all that I'm going for here. Uh, Magic Mocha, while well, we're talking about the game here, <laughs> Magic Mocha is going to go ahead and take some box turtles. So... It's going to be exciting to see how this comes into play. Obviously, on this side, the deer are not here. They are back here. So, a little bit of a difference in house walls coming up. The uh, horse lost some HP here. So, not that great. Juiced being, juicy being juiced out. No, I mean, I'm actually, I'm actually thoroughly enjoying it. It's been great. The uh, only problem is, is, with the holiday weekend, I have fallen behind. And if I'm not going to try to catch up now, it's going to be a hell of a time trying to catch up when all of the round of 64 and round of 32 games for the 1700 bracket fly in. We're down to the round of 16 for the 1300 bracket, though, and players have just under a week to play those as well, so... This is like the craziest week, too, because I've got players in the 1700 bracket that are in both the round of 64 and the round of 32 based on the number of participants we've had sign up. I've got both of those rounds kind of being played simultaneously, although there is there is extra time for the 1700 bracket due to that, but it's just nuts. I love it. It's chaotic, but it's been fun. Andrew, first to the feudal age here. He is going into a Byzantine archery range. Is he even on gold? Okay, he is on gold back here. So he wants to go archers and magic mocha here. Ooh, the militia are trying to come in. Nice, nice placement of that gate. Uh, obviously, this will send everything this way, but we'll ensure that the archery range gets up. The scout or the spearman here that Andrew had started will be blocked and there's still a hole here will he notice nope, the man-at-arms upgrade comes in that blacksmith isn't going to be finished and we're gonna have a little bit of quick walls on this uh, situation here but archers will soon be coming out although he doesn't have the wood Andrew doesn't have the wood he's in a lot of trouble now because he's had to quick wall there are still villagers exposed left and right here and still not a single archer out and at arms are super strong on this map, especially how close you start to one another here. Like he will just kill that deer. It's actually a sheep that Andrew didn't collect. But getting the boar is probably more important. Now this house specifically is on cracked terrain, so these buildings take a lot more damage. I think it's like 20, 25% more damage, which is always awkward. And these men at arms could get through. The archers are here, though, and we have a vill headed forward. Oh, and Magic Mocha walking into the town center here. We'll lose a lot of HP here, if not a unit or so. And just like that, the uh, problem has been solved for the aggression here. Andrew will be comfortable to take things at home now. 
the villager that's coming forward awkwardly is going to be taken out. And the man-at-arms really not much of a threat anymore. Double archery range behind this, though, for our Malian player. Magic Mocha did what he wanted to, enough to delay the attack. He did get good eyes on the base as well. And double archery range versus one. No fletching yet for Magic Mocha. However, Andrew does have it, and he will be looking to keep that advantage for the time being, hopefully, right? Uh, that said, though, lots of archers doing a skirmisher in production. I don't know why you set the waypoints forward. Maybe you have that waypoint bug still sometimes. I mean, it's a problem that I've seen a lot of people have over the last, you know, two years. <laughs> bug that I don't think they've fixed yet either, which is really unfortunate. Blacksmith's going to be coming down here. Sheer numbers will win this fight, though. Magic Mocha being extremely patient behind this. My cow, Magic Mocha, still has his 2 HP horse sitting here. <laughs> Archers gonna be chasing after the man in arms. Magic Mocha, excuse me, Magic Mocha could be in trouble though. His uh, economy is spread out, he's gonna have to run from this. His military is yet to engage, and we go for the padded archer armor first, actually, which... Not a bad play. It's always interesting. We, we never know what we're going to see here, right? So much military for Magic Mocha chasing, though. Not really what you want to be doing with that military mass, but... All things considered, Andrew does have a 2 vil advantage right now. Both players lacking horse collar. And dropping quite a few farms here. But otherwise, even game. Military numbers fairly close. And the counter will come this direction. And uh, one range has a lot of skirms in it. That could be problematic. Have to wait and see here what goes down. No horse collar for Andrew. Feels extremely rough on 11 farms. Of course, eight farms coming down over here. Nine, ten. <laughs> All the farms without horse collar, folks. It's a bit rough, especially on this map where you're uh, going to have some eco being spread across the map. You don't really want to uh, spend those resources if you don't have to. Archer goes down here. Andrew, though, does have military in defense. Walter Wanderly, how are you, sir? The ELO here, this is a 1700 bracket. Uh, both of these players are uh, fairly well matched. I'll have to look up their exact ELOs real quick. Let me pull up the, uh, the document here. That is uh, something I need to really pay attention to that everyone always asks. Sir Isaac is a 1355 ELO. And Andrew is 1409. Now that is their average ELOs. That is not their true ELOs currently. But that gives you an idea. If those are their averages, obviously Andrew uh, a little bit favored as far as peaking on the ELO. A little higher. But nonetheless, it's uh, fairly close. Capture Age just uh, wanted to freeze up on me there, which is awkward. Castle Age is on the way for Andrew behind this, so horse collar be damned. He's uh, going up. He did sell his stone, and he is moving on here. Yeah, Dry Lake Bed, yeah. yeah. This is a very popular map based on previous events. Uh, very heavy, aggressive map. A lot of early military play. You guys missed the set last night, actually. If you weren't here, uh, you're going to have to watch that. There was a very e impressive extended Feudal Age. And it was a very, very interesting game. So Magic Mocha here. 
will be clicking up extremely late in comparison, but he's looking to do damage right now before upgrades could possibly come in. Right now he's just idling. He will not kill that vill, surprisingly. Stable switch is being seen here. Lots of military running all over the place, though. As soon as Castle Age comes in, Andrew is going to be going for at least one night and looks like Elite Skirm, most likely. Well, instead, just bot Canero. Guess you can't afford anything else right now. Black Canero will uh, win this fight decisively, however, once it comes in. Now, their military numbers are a bit off, though, so let's see how much of a difference it actually makes. Skirmishers are diving in here, focusing down the archers. Andrew not microwing those away, specifically. And a good number of those archers have gone down, the micro still being there. Military numbers are fairly even. Castle Age has been clicked for Magic Mocha here as his archers will attempt to draw the military away from his base. This is where I wonder what the decision will be here. Itch coming in with the gifted sub, getting one to BBB. Itch, this legend around here, map maker. So. Give him all your feedback, guys. But uh, thank you, Hitch. Appreciate it. I'm sure BBB will be happy not to have to watch a single ad for the next month. Um, we have a stable here from our Malian player. And he is going plus one defense while his archers continue to draw Andrew out of position. And keeping the base of uh, Magic Mocha here very safe. Byzantine Knight coming out here. He will head forward to try to do some damage. There are some archers in defense. And I'm guessing we're going to see a few camels come out. Crossbows move forward. Bloodlines clicked first. These archers and try to pick off a few of these crossbows. Obviously not, not the greatest fight. The knights are moving in, though. And honestly, if they hit this gold, or if they can find this wood line, it could be pretty devastating. Crossbow Botkin, double stable. Bloodlines was clicked, it was taken away, and now it's been clicked again. And Magic Mocha's in a bit of trouble. He's in a bit of trouble, he's losing some vills, he's down on the vill count. As soon as he goes to deal with this, the Crossbow Skirm army ends up over here. And yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit difficult to secure as the, the direction of army is coming in from three directions right now. It was a very good distraction indeed. These uh, units were crossing, were chasing after these archers for a long time though. So as Magic Mocha knew they were going to be coming. We do have a knight, two knights here. Does he know? Oh, Andrew's trying to try to put a town center right there. He has not seen the military or the eco in the back just yet. I see the point of view. Yeah, he sees this now and sees the military in the front. So he's going to have to deal with this in the back. He's going to have to shoot uphill, which is not ideal. Elite skirm upgrade coming in and there's archers all across the front of the base. This is a bit awkward, though. There's military all around Magic Mocha here. He needs to get this town center up. He needs to deal with these knights. He's got to deal with this in the front. He's everywhere. And villagers are going down on the farm. Surprising that these aren't sticking around to do more. Knights have evaded off into the north. And these crossbows are coming back. And were they seen or not? No, these 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 armies are just patrolling as I guess he's addressing this. And villagers are dying. This town center should still go up, I'd say. 
But obviously, with some more losses, not what you want to see. He needs a garrison. Oh, he hasn't noticed. He hasn't not noticed. Oh, this is a huge, huge raid. Andrew is getting lots of villager kills here. Up 20 vills now. That's a big difference. And the military is still far away from Andrew's base. Andrew is going to be very happy with this damage. And now the knights are going to head out. No, they do see this. They will come back and address this. Those crossbows get cleaned up after killing a lot of ills. And now we see a few camels added in. Cheap Byzantine military coming into play here. And Andrew has 14 villagers on stone. And yeah, we're going to see a castle. An in-your-face castle on the gold. Gold is extremely limited on this map. It may not seem like it when you first look at the map. And I, I think this is going up. There's not enough military here. These crossbows are out of position. This crossbows and camels mixed in here. Even if he kills a few vills, this is going to be a huge problem. And this, this takes magic off of this main gold at his base not going to be pretty and the elite skirms are here so at best we can snipe some vills here but this is going to cost all of his military to try to cancel this castle from going up the military succeeds the castle will go up and that's a byzantine castle on your main gold blocking farm eco blocking production buildings He's gonna have to go for a market here I don't know what he's going for a market for, to be honest, but he is going for a market. And Andrew will simply come and take the gold underneath of that castle. Oh, magic. Mocha is abandoning his town. It's almost a ghost town now. He's down significantly in population now. 90 pop to 52 pop. And it looks like this game's going to go to Andrew after that castle goes up. There are 18 military on the field for Magic Mocha, but there are 32 military here. It's going to be rough. The Knights are going to try to get some kills. Might kill a Vil at best, and nope, not even going to get a kill there as the crossbows and the skirms mixed in here. We're going to dive on this. Market abuse galore. Is he, he's buying food? He's just buying food right now? Is that what he's going for? He's trying to queue up knights out of those stables. It is not looking good here. Really, there's there's not much else he can do. He's going to have to hope that Andrew backs off and things get very messy here in order to survive as... Ah, no. The, the, the vills on the farms here are going down and the GG comes in a quick quick game here Andrew takes game number one from Magic Mocha it really it just came down to the military and the, the, the castle age time for Andrew that Bot Canero really did help out a lot and the eco behind it was very clean Byzantine cheap military always a benefit Something that players uh, don't always take into consideration, I feel like, when drafting. Byzantines are a dangerous save. If I'm not going to try to pick them myself, I'm probably banning them myself. GG's. Uh, let's see. We saw a Malian loss and a Byzantine victory. We will head to the home mech of magic mocha which will be nomad hubs for game number two and he's gonna hope to force a game three and put us on to lanes after that so let's dive into game number two on nomad hubs here here we go thanks again for joining me by the way i appreciate everybody hope everyone's having a great day hope everyone had a great holiday weekend and uh, early into the week, really. It was, it's always weird when a holiday falls in the middle of the week. But Nomad Hubs, we've seen a lot of games here. Obviously, for those who don't know, the mangrove trees are the wood hubs. 
with the bog terrain, 250 wood per tree, which is huge. We have the food hub where Andrew is placing his town center. And that's just because you have a lot of hunt berries, usually a lot of boars nearby. And then we have the uh, same for Mocha. He's going to place it in a food hub. Where are the mineral hubs? Here we have them all in the north. Interesting. So most of them here are in the middle of the map, headed to the eastern side of the map. And you have 1,200 gold per tile there. Stones and cheap or heritables are usually mixed in between all of these, making it a very interesting spread out nomad start. But I really like the town center for Magic Mocha here, as he will struggle for gold. Well, a very safe stone. He's got to secure gold at some point here. Is a bit awkward, but same can be said for Andrew. He'll have food. His town center, his starting TC is a little bit worse in my opinion. He will have a lot of sheep, and he will have some hunt and some berries nearby. But I do like this town center a bit better personally. However, it's early. You never know what's going to happen, and you never know if these TCs positions are going to be good or bad when placing them. Magic Mocha is going to be in the southernmost corner of the map, though, so he's going to have some issues getting out left or right here. And honestly, if uh, Andrew sees that he's down here and we see some sort of a tower rush from Koreans, this could be a death sentence here because there's really nothing behind you and it's going to be hard to escape. Wait and see what happens, but very interesting start indeed. Khmer versus Koreans as well. Bringing in the boar. Oh, it didn't even come with him. He had to turn back for that one. Saves the veil. All right, all right. Whew. GG's. You know, these good, interesting, quick game number one here. Let's see what Nomad Hubs brings us. Obviously... Andrew looking to close this one out, but at the same time, Magic Mocha looking to force that game three and stay alive. And if we do go to a game three, it will be on lanes. So lots of maps in this bracket, but for the system and the way the draft works now, couldn't be more happy having different games for game one. It has been uh, quite nice and very fun to see different Maps as game one as the neutral map. I also feel like then players have a little bit of a more interesting position as we see uh, Magic Mocha doing what he can to push this deer in farther and farther towards the town center, which is just marvelous. No one on wood for Magic Mocha, which is really nice with Khmer and is a huge benefit here. They do not need to go build any specific building to click to the next stage. So all of his villas can be on food. Just some sheep scouts here for Andrew as he will be very pleased with his starting spot here. We'll end up with two boar and potentially a deer. Ended up getting lucky on the sheep here as well. And it looks like Magic Mocha has gotten at least a few of those sheep now. Going to be an interesting game here, though. Nomad Hubs, always fun, has provided us with quite a few of interesting games. As uh, this house is going to come in just in time, really. Andrew actually going to get that third boar in from all the way over there. He's doing a good job scouting the map here. We'll be very pleased with his resources here in a moment. And he should be clicking up before too long as we see Magic Mocha click up at a 17 top. What you can do with the power of Khmer when you have all of your villagers on food. Only had 13 seconds vital TC time as well. You do start with four villagers on this map. So it does make it a little bit uh, different, a little bit more awkward, but we'll see how that plays out. Obviously, 
Andrew has a lot of resources here. But this is actually good for Magic Mocha as he clicked up so early. We'll have to see what he goes for. My assumption here is we're going to see a stable, which only makes sense at this point. PC trick, another boar goes down. And it won't be long before we have some scouts onto the field, and that could be very dangerous. Andrew does find himself right next to this uh, wooden node or hub, and he's going to take forever to chop through these few trees. Those villagers won't move for like five minutes in game time. But he's Howls again. He will click up, actually. Uh, Loomis come in. We see a defensive barracks coming in. Stable here for Magic Mocha. Makes a lot of sense that this is the time that he's coming in now. And we see some uh, potential walls coming up. There's still a hole in between here, which he lured that one boar. But if he knows where his opponent is, that could be a different story. I don't know if this is a lost sheep. Feels like it very well could be, especially since he's building his buildings this direction. Uh, and on this side, he... I don't think knows. He does see another boar, though. So he will be going after another boar. Scouts on the field, however. And we'll see how things progress here. This uh, villager is uh, having a bit of trouble. He's actually going to bring the scout over, I think, to block with it. Or not. He's just going to uh, move along here. The gate is kind of curious. I guess he's waiting for his military building here as he will go into an archery range with the Koreans. And the Koreans, with their archers now being so cheap on the wood cost, is actually kind of insane. Howl's here. He's going to get that town watch going. He will have some scouts moving forward, but there's, they can't really do any damage here right now. Double bid axe coming in here for Andrew already. Has yet to come in for Magic Mocha. Uh, he hasn't really had a lot on wood, though, so can't really fault him for not really wanting to use that. Some idle time under this DC. The gold villagers are going to be in some trouble, and they choose to fight back. One villager should die here, though. As it does, kit. we get one vil kill. Oh, the spear's coming in, though. That could be bad. The spear, as it noticed, gets a few hits off. That was quite nice, and the archer production behind this has begun. That sheep's not going to make it back to Magic Mocha. Oof. Dangerous game, trying to get out to that vil. Uh, attempted gate. <laughs> nice. Uh, this is where we're going to see what happens, though. We have a lot of scouts getting onto the field. And the spears should have archers to accompany them forward. So it's a very low HP villager right here. A couple low HP vills on the berries. There's more vills. Could go down here. Andrew could be in trouble. He could lose more vills right here. As we do see another vill go down. Magic Mocha getting a few kills here. Gonna be pretty happy with that. The spears though. Pushing this away for the time being. And I think these villagers are chasing the scouts, which is actually really awkward. <laughs> A lot of idle time there. Yeah, archer numbers are only up to two. Spearmen continue to pile on here, though. And every spearman made makes it more and more difficult as a scout will go down here. I'm going to add a blacksmith. Continuing with the scout production. Takes off, get another mill, and gets away with the scouts. So, good, good scout management here. To wait and see what occurs. Ooh. He does lose another one to those spearmen, though. It's never ideal. All things considered, the archers have yet to go forward. 
spear numbers are quite high. It is double archery range, but for the most part, Andrew is just playing Spearman Defense. The scouts will finally regroup and become one. We have a Boil Bill coming in, a Lumber Camp, an Archery Range, and a lot of houses coming down, but... What can he do now? He needs to try to do some damage to these scouts. I guess he'll find these archers, and now he's not going to dive on them, or is he? He needs to. Doesn't want to go in the gate. I can understand that. He knows what the map looks like. Fletching is on its way in. Some more walls coming up, making it even more difficult for these scouts to pay off. Scout production has stopped. We have archer production behind this, which is going to be pretty nice. And the sheep, I guess, are going to be pulled into combat or uh, sent home at some point. Double bit X down for Magic Mocha. Both players, a uh, very even situation. We have had a few extra kills here for Magic Mocha, obviously. He's at a 3 2 KD. And three kills are the eco kills. He hasn't killed a single spearman yet. But this is uh, looking to be a scary military force. As the spear here will get ganged up on and will go down. But they're going to take a lot of HP off of this. And the military shows up. This will get pushed away for the moment. Another villa is going to go down, though. Is he going to be able to wall that up? What's he going to go for here? I guess he's not going to go for anything. He's just going to run around in circles. Great damage here. Lots of scouts microing going on. Scouts are going down, though. The, the numbers are slowly going down. We have uh, very few archers here. Forward. Archers and spears are going to head this direction. A lot of walls have already come down, and this is where it's going to be super difficult for Magic Mocha here, because he is going to be under threat. He's got his own archers with fletching. He is missing padded archer armor. And he needs to take this fight now, actually, before these archers all show up. He needs to micro down those spears with the archers, but now the main group of archers has shown up. And the scouts are not going to be able to deal with this very easily. And the gold will have to be abandoned. And that hurts. To lose gold, lose vills here. Couple villagers. Oh, and the spears going to do the job and take out the scouts here. Oh, no. Magic Mocha's in trouble. He just doesn't have the military here now. He has some more archers, but oh, Andrew is just making quick work of the vill count here. Oof. Oof. Andrew has a five villager lead here. Uh, as he actually needs to like drop a house to block these archers in or something to get those safe. There are a few more here, and oh, there's, this could be four more dead vills. Andrew clicks the castle age behind this. The macro has just been good behind it all. Done a lot of damage here. Eco KD is now 5 to 4. But, again, he's not on gold. Got nothing but farms and stuff coming in, so we will have to shift into skirmishers. And behind this, Andrew is uh, going to drop a market. He's going to have a bunch of good seeded farm still still looking fairly even after everything is said and done but no gold income for magic here and he's going to want some before too long or could have difficulty defending this as castle age will be in And Magic Mocha is actually pretty far away from this next age, so Castle Age will be huge. He'll have the resources 
for uh, some upgrades as well, and he's gonna full wall himself in here now. Castleage will be here. Andrew actually is selling some food. He'll drop another archery range, so he'll go for a three archery range play. And there's Crossbow and Watkin coming in yet again. Andrew enjoying his archer play here. One archer gets picked off before the upgrades are able to come in. And again, Magic Boca is going to send the uh, military he does have back and hope that uh, the military from Andrew chases. A few more scout or spears. <laughs> I cannot talk. A few more skirmishers here. No other military, as Andrew's likely going to need to click up shortly. And yeah, this, this is... Uh, not really much of a threat, right? So the crossbows come forward and we have a forward siege workshop. I mean, a couple towers could be devastating here. This gets denied. There's only four vills and five skirmishers there though. And Andrew continues to produce here. Siege Workshop will be up shortly, will cause some problems, and Andrew uh, is on gold again finally. He does click the next age. The Manganel will be the choice here for Andrew. Villagers running to the gold over here. If those get seen, that could be a huge problem, and it looks like Andrew's headed that way right now. Maybe he won't see it. If he sees it, it could be super problematic. Oh, and the the military got cleaned up in the back. So we'll have skirmishers. We'll have a mangonel as Castle is coming in here about halfway. Villagers continue to run. This will be a good gold mine for a long time. Town watch for the Korean player coming in. Sub night. Oh, and the GG comes in quickly there, quickly. So Andrew calls it out, uh, calls it set, completed. A quick one, a quick one. Um, well. Congratulations to Andrew. He will advance and move on. Thank you, uh, Magic Mocha, for your interest and participation. Hopefully you enjoyed. Always nice to have you. And hopefully everyone has enjoyed the casting thus far. Now, I did have limited time. Um, this, right now, was my limited time. I had about two hours. It's been about 45 minutes. I don't know how long these sets are. so. I will probably do some um, ones to fill another little bit of time after we update the bracket. Because uh, I don't really want to start casting something and then potentially not get to finish casting it. But I will be back tonight. And I will cast two more sets. The we have missions here. Give you guys an idea. Uh, Lonzo Wall and Shaman 25. And then we'll have Walter Wandering and Plan B. Those would be the plan sets for this evening. Uh, 9 p.m. start time. And uh, I've still got like three or four sets after that to cast that have already been turned in. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're going to chance up on that. Uh, probably should play my set. Yeah, now you have some extra time. Uh, basically, we have extended the time frame by an entire week for the uh, 1700 bracket due to the number of participants and there being a round of 64. So you have a little bit more time. However, if you can play, uh, go for it. That would be great. It would help me out as uh, I can then see how the schedule and the casting and stuff will look at some point. But... 
Yeah. GG's to both of these guys, though. Appreciate it. Good luck next, Andrew. We're going to update the bracket really quickly here. If you want to avoid spoilers from the previous set, you don't have to worry because I just won't scroll down that low. <laughs> um, and this was a round of 64 set here, so here's Sherry the bracket with you. Sir Isaac is also a magic mocha. Andrew takes the set over him two games to none, and he will advance on to play DJ Sapson. Sapson? DJ Sapson? But, oh, and there's my phone ringing. Second, guys. <laughs> 